Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems and today's system is from the user Polaris Binary Star System in Discord so massive thank you to them for sending this in and they're giving us a little description before we even get into this so they're saying here is an experimental system that I've worked on for a while. It has gone through multiple iterations, most of which were guessing and checking to create stable orbits and moons and planets. It's been in development for a total of two months. The system is fairly stable but cannot run very fast due to the insane object count. Have fun. Okay, so let's see what they have prepared for us here. We've got a big one. Right, uh, there it is. Right, let's see. Uh, let's see what we uh, have got here. Okay. Whoa. Okay. That's a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, it's a lot of. Oh, alrighty. So, Bionni Barry Center. So, um, okay. Oh yeah, that's okay. So that's the first part he said. So the uh, Anstack ABC system. The Anstack uh, system is home to the stars uh, Anstack, uh, Atta Quinn, and Artis Piper. Piper. Um, 18 planets, 4 terrestrial winter planets, 7 giant outer planets, and 1 giant terrestrial outermost planet orbiting the uh, the Barry Center. Three giant inner uh, planets and two terrestrial outer planets orbiting uh, Artisipa, and one massive giant orbiting for all three stars. The uh, Yatusk belt between uh, Antask and Artusquin, which uh, I think these two, uh, yeah, they're these two. Um, between the orbits, um, with, uh, oh God, I've lost where I was. <laughs> uh, between the orbits of those orbits around beyond Allo. The Halepana belt located between the orbits. Okay, so there's basically a lot of astral belts. Okay, so we'll get to those when we, uh, when we get to them. So, star itself, that's this one. It's an F type main sequence star, 55% larger than the sun, 1.6 times the mass. Then the second star here, the B star, is a G type main sequence star, 40% larger than the sun, with 1.1 times its mass. Very nice. Okay, there's a lot of minor objects in here as well, little asteroids. Okay. Looks like the first of the planets is this one. Oh, no, I don't think it is. This is a um. Yeah, this is a dwarf planet by the looks of it. Um, yeah. So the Yatusk Belt is a large debris field between 0 0.3 and 0 0.8 AU from the Barry Center. It's home to the dwarf planet uh, Feeding and several large asteroids. The belt is theorized to have formed due to the combined destructive gravities of uh, both stars. Binary system interfering with the planet formation in the region. Okay. So this is feeding here. So this is the largest of the uh, objects in there. By looks, it says the debris belt. Okay. Next up, we have this one. Rachma over here. So there you go. It's the closest planet of the uh, to the binary barrier center. It is surface temperatures upwards of 130 Fahrenheit. Although on the warmer side, it is hospitable. And despite the higher temperatures, large oceans cover the polar regions of the planet with minuscule ice caps visible from orbit. However, most of the planet is an arid desert waste. The planet has a rather thick nitrogen atmosphere containing some oxygen and CO2. So if we have a look a bit, you see the little uh, patches of water. Better look up there, north and south. There's some on the other side. Yep. Very nice. Nice design. I like it. Cool. And it's got some more objects around it. Uh, little moons. Okay. Nice. Moving on, we're heading to uh, this one. Her sphere. Small desert planet. There it is. Nice. Contain only 13% of the mass of the Earth. Its environment is similar to that of Arachma. However, Hesphere lacks any substantial bodies of water and has a far thinner atmosphere. Its appearance and composition are similar to Mars. It's a little warmer though. 60 degrees here. There is the moon. Okay. Very nice. Nice design on this so far. I'm liking it. Right. Moving on, we are now to Chinam over here. A cold, cloudy water world with frozen oceans forming massive ice caps concealing most of the northern and southern hemispheres. It was once warmer and had ocean life of all kinds. However, a climate shift occurred, causing all life on Chinam to go extinct. Ho ho ho! So yeah, it's pretty, uh, 3 degrees Celsius. Have a little look underneath. There it is. Oh yeah, it's pretty frozen up. Big ice age going on there, pretty much. Okay, excellent. Liking it. It has one moon. Awesome. Right, moving on, we now have over here. Macra. Okay. A small metallic planet, similar in competition to Mercury. It has a thick hydrocarbon atmosphere and small lakes of liquid methane and ethane on its surface. 
These lakes are inhabited by exotic microscopic creatures which first formed via abiogenesis. Let's have a little look underneath. There he is. Okay. Very nice. There is the moon. Nice. Okay. Moving on to... So we've got Anot next. Which is here. Oh, I don't know where. Hang on. Oh, hang on. I've lost where I was. We've just done this one, Macware. So where's Anot? Aha! So we're skipping this one. This one is called Dighton. There's no description for that one. It looks like it's a dwarf plant, actually. So we're going to Anat now, over here. Gas giant. There he is. It's the first gas giant orbiting the Byre Center. It has a family of moons, both large and small, each unique in its appearance and properties. So we'll have a peek at those. So let's have a look. Click on orbits, get a better view. There you go. Have more up in the menu up there. Okay, it's better. Very nice. Looking good. Awesome. Okay. Right, next up we're heading to the... So let's go back to trails, I think. Okay, so we've got the, the Able Belt. So that's all of these objects here. Uh, it's a wide scattered debris field between 5.7 and 10.9 AU away from the Barrier Center. The motions of the objects in this belt are altered by the motions of this system's Jovian planets, Anot, Arton, and Tascal. The Abal belt is home to two dwarf planets. Um, I'm not going to have no idea how to say that one, and Laffer. So, one I can't say is this one. <laughs> Anyone can say that? Is is it Quam? But there it is. And then the second one was. Oh, it has moons as well. There you go two minor bodies around those and yeah over here was the other one so that was L Laffer which is here there he is nice okay looking good uh, and then we have Arton over here Saturn sized planet with a sparse neighborhood occupied by three massive moons that can all support atmospheres as well as a smaller fourth moon here it is Nice. There we are. So that one there, that one has some interesting conditions. Let's have a little look down here. Okay. That's just the atmosphere. Maybe it look a little more than I thought it would be. Okay. Cool. All right. Oh, well, it's quite a lot of moves further out, actually. There you go. So there's a full big set of them there. Nice. Go on orbit. So there's your full view of it. Very cool. Okay. Uh, so it's trails. Okay, so moving on. Next up, we are heading to Tascal, which is there. Got a realistic theme to these designs as well. I like it. So Tascal, Saturn-sized giant. It has a few rocky moons. Okay, it's pretty straight up. There they all are there. So your generic rocky moons. So yeah, very realistic design for this one. And we like those. So you know, you get the ones with exotic colours, but you know, the realism side isn't always there. You know, even with some of my systems, I like to have exotic colours. But yeah, this one is a full on, from what I'm gauging, a full on realistic looking object. You know, the sort of stuff you would expect to see. No fancy exotic greens or purples or things like that. It's more down to earth. Well, I say down to earth. Um, not really on earth. But um, yeah, so a lot more legitimate looking objects in a way. Uh, right, so we've just done, yeah, we've done those, Tascal, so now we're heading to uh, Luri over here. A large Neptune analog ice giant with massive beautiful ice rings and thick methane and water vapour atmosphere. It has two moons, one large and one small. There is a ring system there, let's change the view mode to enhanced, and there you go, so you get a better look of it. Nice. It's moons. Very, very cool. So they both are awesome. Uh, yeah, the nice, uh, the nice blue Neptune look like. Excellent. So now we've got Hall as the next planet out. Another ice giant similar to Uranus in composition. Okay, which is here. So more uh, pale, bland object. Another ice giant similar to Uranus in composition with our. Uh, Three quarters the mass of Luri. It is accompanied by two small moons. So there you go. So you got one, two, or maybe a third. That's three. Okay. Nice. Next up, we've got Eaton. Which is here. 
Small ice giant, large frozen super, depending on what classification system you use. I mean, to me, that would be more of an ice giant. Uh, it is a gas appearance, not a rocky world underneath. Look at the composition, though. You can see it contains a lot of water, more than anything else. Uh, but has a obviously a layer of hydrogen on there as well. Nice, but yeah, to me, that'd be an ice giant rather than a super rough. Um, size wise, you know, it's three point. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's an ice giant to me. Um, I'm sure there'll be a debate about that in the comments, though. You know, that's not what you think. You know, what, what would you class this, guys? I mean, to me, that's got to be an ice giant, hasn't it? Surely. It's got the band colours and stuff as well in there. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, so where were we? So, yeah, Eaton, small moon, two. This one's covered by two small moons. Okay. Nice. And it does have to two. There you go. So, we're seeing a binary with this moon. What's going on there? That shouldn't be a binary orbit. What? In a binary with that? With a planet this big? Yeah, I'm not sure that's quite right. Game's being weird, I think. It's not possible. Right. Next up. We're heading to Cham Chambox over here. So another Neptune lookalike. Very deep blue. Second Neptune analogue and the last ice giant in the system has two large moons. Got a ring system as well. And there they are. Two moons. Nice. Cool. Oh, oh, oh there's a third one. There you go. Hey. Okay, so next up we got the Quimbel objects. So a collection of small icy bodies on the edge of the system. Among them visit the dwarf planets Pacon and Visi. There's pack on there. There he is. Very nice. And the planet Allo. Or pack on a pack on Visi. So, wait, wait, okay, so where's the yeah, Visi? Vi vi Let's have a look. There it is. See, a very small little world hidden away in the dark almost. And then the planet Allo. So, a uh, full-on planet sitting here. 1.7 Earth radius. A uh, pretty decent size object. Obviously, very far away from the start. I mean, if we have a look at the stats here. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's got a, oh, it's a binary. There you go. Well, oh, it looks like a binary. The, or yeah, okay. the orbital period is definitely not 23 hours around the star. <laughs> so, where, where, where about, so, how far are we roughly sitting? Let's go to, say, uh, trails. Uh, an object in a similar region. How far, how far are we from the star at this point? So, this one here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, where am I going mad? Where, where are we at? Oh, yeah. Tojin. Uh, no, no, mate, it's motion. What am I doing? 53 AU. It's, it's a pretty, pretty far distance here. Okay. Or they just. Uh, yeah, alright, okay. 25. Um, yeah. Cool. We're going mad, I think. Right, so. Moving on. Oh, yeah, aloe. So let's go back to the aloe. Yeah, hello. An icy super earth with ammonia oceans and a thick icy crust can see even bigger water oceans beneath. Its ammonia water atmosphere is almost a thousand times as thick as Earth's atmosphere. It has one massive moon, a former Quimmel object which Allo captured. Okay, so captured an object from this asteroid belt out here. Nice. Right, so we're jumping out of this system now. So we've got both of you. There's more dwarf planets there. Another little object on the edge here. There's another Barry Center between these stars and the third star over here. And there's a lot going on over here. Check that out. Okay. Very nice. Oh, there you go. So, uh, the third star. This is uh, Atis Piper. Um, it's a G-type moon, so you can star 12% smaller than the sun with 0.97% its mass. 97% its mass. Uh, it has elliptical orbit around uh, the very center, several hundred AU beyond the Quimble objects, which we just visited. Excellent. Okay. First up, we got low over here. Saturn appearance. Very similar to Saturn appearance. Nice. Closest planet. A Saturn-sized planet of beautiful rings and a crowded system of moons, several of which are potentially habitable. One of Lowe's moons is host of organic multicellular life forms which thrive on its large oceans, with some photo... Uh, synthetic organisms pioneering on the world or many land masses of this small world but which one is it let's have a look at the moon just gotta find it i'm guessing maybe it's this one already a good looking world nice 12 degrees so you got good conditions there uh, next moon out okay so moving on let's see what else we have got that was one of the more dull moons so there's any more other hatable looking ones yeah, it looks like, yeah, that one is definitely the one with the organic multicellular life forms. It's definitely going to be this one. Very nice. It's a good looking moon. I like it. And then, yeah, the other moons are more uh, genetic rocks as well. Cool. All right. 
Ooh, I quite like the way that one looks, actually. Let's get a close look at that. See a bit of uh, clouds on it. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so next up, we are now moving, taking a big jump to Mana over here. Another Geass Giant. The mini Saturn with powerful storms and several moons. Like low, Mana has rings. However, Mana's rings are far smaller and less easily spotted. Okie dokie. Then on its moons. There they all are there. Very nice. Okay. Next up, we're heading to the Helipana Belt. A scattered debris field around 3.7 6.3 AU away. The motion of objects in the belt are altered by the motions of this system's Jovian planets low and manor, as well as the ice giant Pendle. The uh, the belt is home to dwarf planets Equel and Robus, which are... Where are they, actually? Uh, there's one... Uh, I can't even see them. Oh, we're taking a... Ah, okay, so there's one there. So it's quite a big set of objects. So you've got Robus there. And there's the second one there. Uh, that one. That one's definitely the more interesting of the two. So there it is. Atmosphered up. Very cold here. And very, very small. So there it is. So now we're moving on to Pendel here. A sulfuric ice giant. A rare type of ice giant with a composition of multi sulfur dioxide rather than water, giving it a distinct red orange hue. Pendel has three small moons. So there they are. There's the third one. Very nice. Okay. So now we're going to another belt, so further out, so that's all of this stuff. Uh, the Tarry Belt is a widespread field of rocky and metallic objects between the orbits of Pendle and Dalphi. It's rich in resources and materials and is home to the dwarf planet Nosk, which is that one. Okay, so now over here we're heading to uh, Dalphi. A large, cold desert planet, twice the mass of Earth. So in complete darkness now, so we're pretty far. We're well, a bit of light, but yeah, very dark. The surface is devoid of water, highly irradiated it and covered in nitrogen and CO2 frost. It has a residual similar to Mars and a composition similar to Earth's. Okay. There is its moons. Two moons for this guy. There you go. And then moving on to Rhea over here. Rhea. A small terrestrial planet contained only 15% of the mass of Earth. It has highly active tectonics and is always undergoing massive volcanism. It is believed to host large underground oceans and perhaps even life. However, it lacks surface water. Instead, it has small deposits of liquid CO2 on its surface. Okay. And then lastly, we got Kra, which is a cryo Azurian gas giant. Where is that? Oh, that's the one he said about orbiting all of the, the whole thing. Yeah, the whole complex. All right, here it is. Oh, wowee. Okay. All dark. Around 0 0.7 times the mass of Jupiter, making it the largest planet. It is over 2,000 AU away from the Barry Center uh, and both the uh, AB and C system. It has been ejected from the C system sometime during its formation, has a large ring system and many moons. So that's your, that's your Planet 9, uh, Planet X kind of world here. And there it is. That is your lineup. Very, very nice. I like that system. That was quite complex. I, I, I like the way the that was structured. It's well built. Um, I like it. So there is the full lineup of everything. Oh, look at the rings. There's so many rings. Oh, yeah. But, yes, yeah, a very realistic lineup. You know, you've got all the different shades of blue gas giants in there. You've got your regular, or ice giants, I'd say. You've got your regular gas giants looking pretty awesome as well. I like it. It was a good, good, good system. Yeah, so massive thank you to Polaris Binary Star System for sending this in to us. Good system. I like it. Very, very nice. And, yeah, that will send on everybody. If you like this video, let's see if we can go for 100 likes on today's video as well. And also subscribe for more. Help us in the journey to 50,000 subscribers. But that will send on everyone. Make sure you all have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.